Hello. In this section, we're going to create a presentation for our holiday company. Now, first, we need to import a file, an RTF file, into PowerPoint. However, there's no function in PowerPoint, at least in our version, to do this automatically. So, I'm going to find the file. Here it is, jxpres.rtf, in the files that we downloaded earlier. And I'm going to right-click and open with Microsoft Word. So here's the information that needs to go in our presentation. And I'm also going to open Microsoft PowerPoint so that I can copy and paste this information into a presentation. So I'm going to cancel here. We want to, we'll want to design our own theme later. So here's a blank presentation. And we need we we know we need four slides, each with a title and some bullet points. So I'm going to add one, two, three, four new slides, and I'm going to delete this first slide because it doesn't appear that we need a heading slide, a title slide. Then copy the title, command C to copy, command V to paste, delete any extra lines that are placed. Command C, Command B, and the same for the rest of the slides. Now, just pausing on slide three for a second, we can see in the in the RTF file the answer one, answer two, answer three should be indented. So I'm going to click at the beginning of each of those lines and press Tab. So that now follows the required format. And continue with the fourth slide. And again on the fourth slide, answer four, answer five should be indented. Now that that's copied, I can close the RTF file and continue to work on the presentation. And now we need to save the presentation. So let's save it with the same file name as the file we imported. And make sure we save it in the same folder as all the rest of our files. So the file name is going to be jxpres, and we'll miss off the .rtf, and PowerPoint will automatically give it the correct extension for a presentation. Next we need to design our master slide, so we click on Themes, Edit Master, Slide Master. Now the master slide must have a white background, it already does, so we can leave that. Now in the top right hand corner we need some details, so let's move the, move the title down slightly. Resize the main box and we want to insert a text box. So click on Home, Text, Text Box. And let's draw a box that's big enough to include all of the required information, which is our center number, candidate number, and name. And I'll right align that to make sure it's correctly positioned. And then select it and change it to a 12 point black, it is black, serif font. So a nice serif font might be Times New Roman. Next, we need a clip art image of the sun as a logo in the bottom right corner. So, insert clip art gallery. Type in sun. And here's a nice image of the sun. Let's use this. So, move that to the bottom right. Resize it to make it a little smaller. 
that should be fine. But first, let's delete this, these boxes at the bottom. Draw another text box at the bottom left. Click in the text box and then insert slide number. And there we have the slide number. So that's the master slide finished. Click on close master and we can see it's been applied to all of our four slides. Now we need to insert a new slide before slide one. So click on new slide and this is going to have a title and a subtitle. This is a title slide. Now that's been inserted after slide one so I just need to move it up before slide one. Now the subtitle should be new website core and the title should be the relaxing holiday company. Now the order there doesn't make sense which is why the instructions ask us to move the title so that it's below the subtitle. So let's move the subtitle up first and move the title down. That looks fine. Now we need to come to explaining some things about our web pages and placing the answers in this presentation. So first we go to slide 4 and work out what to place in answer 1. Why doesn't the background image in this file work. Well let's open this CSS file so we can try and work out why the background image doesn't work. So navigate to our folder, open the CSS, let's open it in text edit. Now, where's the background image defined? It's defined in this line. Body background image is this file. Now, there seems to be nothing wrong with the way this is written. Let's just check if the file actually exists. JX bubble without an e.jpg. And if we look in, if we look in our folder with all of the downloaded files. Well, there is a file called JX Bubble, but it has an E. So the reason is the file name has not been spelled correctly, so the file doesn't exist. And so file name is not spelled correctly. And I could say bubble instead of of an E. Next, the HTML code to make the background color show. The background color is this part, but we need to include the whole of this line because this refers to the background of the body. So let's copy and paste the entire line in place of answer two. Finally, well, before we come to answer three, the style sheet should have H1 and H2 white, H3 yellow. But why is the text for H1 and H2 not white and H3 not yellow? So let's look at the CSS again. H1 is the color of H1. It should be white. White would be FF. FF, FF, because it contains the full amount of red, green, and blue. But we can see 0, 0 means there's no green component, component of H1 or H2. And H3 should be yellow. Now we get yellow by mixing green and blue, so yellow should be OOFF. 
so the, the color codes are not correct. So as an answer, let's write color codes should be as for white and that's our answers. Now I've got one slight problem in that the, the logo is being overlapped so one thing I could do is on the end of the word for, if I press shift enter, it will take us to a new line. Now we come on to answer four, that's on slide five. So moving to slide five, we need to describe what cell padding in HTML coding is. A cell padding refers to the empty space within a cell between the contents of the cell and the border of the cell. In a table. And cell spacing refers to the space between adjacent cells in... So again, I'll press Shift-Enter here to take me to a new line. Uh, table. So that's our answers. Now, point 40 is to make sure that no objects overlap any of the master slide items. I think we did that. Let's just check back through this presentation. That's fine. Now I need to present, save the presentation using a new file name. So file save as, file save as, sorry, file save, oops, file save as now I need to save the presentation using a new file name so file save as let's call it jxpres2 and print the presentation with two slides on each page so file print print what print handouts with two slides per page and click print and it will get sent to our printer and that's the end of the PowerPoint section thank you for watching